So I wonder sometimes, do you ever wonder or secretly ask, God, really, what's the point of my faith? We come from a rich tradition where we celebrate Christmas in December and we celebrate Jesus coming in flesh, God himself coming down to us. And then we look forward to Good Friday where we celebrated and remembered what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. On Easter, we celebrated his life and his resurrection and his conquering death. And so we know these Bible answers. We know what the right answer is. But in our daily lives, in the day in and day out, of everything that we do, does Jesus' life, death, and resurrection actually matter? Does it make a difference? College really is the time for you to ask these deeper questions. There is a freedom here to say, okay, Lord, what do I really believe? Do I really believe that you're with me? And so I'd like you to just take a moment, just in silence, to ask God this question. What do I really believe? Where does God show up? Do you feel like he's here with you? If so, how? And if not, why not? And why doesn't it maybe not matter to me at the moment? So let's take a moment in silence to answer this question. God, I thank you that you know us, and no matter where we're at, whether we're in a season of doubting or unbelief, or whether we're in a season of just knowing how very present you are with us, that God, that we have the opportunity to just draw near to you and that you take us and you love us just as we are. Our questions are not too big for you and you give us freedom to be who we are in the places that we are at with you. And so we offer ourselves to you this morning. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. So here at Biola, it's easy to figure out the truth, right? We have access to Bible professors, to people who have walked with Jesus for so many years. There are people that can help us to figure out the truth, the right answers. But in Ephesians chapter three, Paul actually talks about something more than just that knowledge of understanding. So if you have your Bibles, or if you wanna pull out your phones, um, feel free to turn to Ephesians three, because we're actually gonna be going through some scriptures this morning. In Ephesians chapter three, Paul is talking about this knowledge beyond knowledge, and it's this more whole person knowledge. It takes our mind, it takes our heart, it's our emotions, it's our will, it's everything, it's like the gut, everything of who we are. So I'm gonna start in Ephesians four, or Ephesians three, verse 14. And here Paul gives us a rich theology of the church. He also gives us a rich theology of Christ reconciling all of creation back to himself. So he is drawing near, he's drawing his creation to himself, which is actually pretty amazing because that means he knows he created you, he knows you individually, he knows me, he knows the person sitting next to you, and he intimately loves you and wants to indwell you and wants to bring you to himself. So that actually does mean, I'm pretty sure that we're important. We're important to God and that we matter. So in Ephesians chapter three, starting in verse 14, Paul says to the, Ephesians at Ephes- or to the believers at Ephesus, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And so Paul hopes that these believers will be filled with the fullness of God, that Christ would dwell in their hearts through faith. That's actually pretty amazing, that he intimately wants to connect with us and that we're not alone. He wants you to know that you matter, that you are loved. And honestly, I think being loved by somebody actually changes us, right? When we're connected to friends, when we're connected to family, maybe a significant other, when we're loved and cared about by someone else and we get to experience that, it changes us. 
God wants his love to change us. And this is what Paul's talking about. So there's an invitation from God here. For many of us, life may feel full right now. You might be in your second one of midterms, exams, papers. Most of us probably have jobs, maybe even a second job. Maybe some of us are getting really busy practicing for mock rock or we have other club things going on. There's just a lot on our plates. Some of us, we actually are just trying to just get by. Like what's the least that I can do to just get by? And so the question then becomes, what is God inviting you to regardless of what place you find yourself this morning? I think it's easier to just go back and do things the way that we always do them. So whatever your default is, huh, I might just do it because it's easier. And sometimes what I find is my default, even though I think in my head I'm doing it with God because maybe I'm praying about it, I wonder if I'm actually doing it with God allowing him to indwell me, to do his indwelling work in me, and then me partnering with him and meeting with him in that. So I think there's an invitation here for us. It's in the mundane places of life when we think that it doesn't really matter that we're presented with a choice. And this choice is do we press into God? Do we dwell with him as he is already drawing us to himself? Or do we go on doing things the way that we've often always done them? Which, honestly, for most of us has probably worked, which is why you're here. This repeated choice actually trains something in us. It's a pattern. It's teaching and training our reflexes, our automatic default response, in a way that will just reinforce what we're gonna do in the future. So in a sense, The choices that we make today are gonna impact how we make decisions and how we do life later. So I think for me, um, being on staff here and thinking about these things and being with students, I'm often wondering, how are we actually equipping you and training you for life after Biola? What rhythms do you have in your life? What ways of walking with God? What opportunities are you moving towards the Lord so that he can actually change you and grow you? Are you actively participating in now? Because if we don't grow these rhythms with the Lord, I really, really doubt that we're gonna have time to do them later. And a lot of us often think, I can practice the Sabbath after I graduate because I'm gonna have so much more time. The reality is it's probably not gonna happen because you're gonna have other responsibilities, you're gonna have other pressures, there's gonna be a lot going on in life. So what you do now and how you walk with the Lord and how you walk with others is laying a foundation for how you will do life with him after Biola. So this is a training in mind and in heart and in our response. So what you do today matters. This morning we're gonna take some time to just dwell with God in the scriptures. We're gonna ask God to write the truths of his word upon our hearts and our minds. If you follow Jesus and you already have a personal relationship with him, you are a new creation. Your heart, the whole of your person has already been redeemed. And so there's an invitation for you to continue to walk in that. For some of you, I, you know, some of you may not actually really know Jesus. I know you're here, but maybe some of you don't have that. And this is an opportunity for you to ask the Lord, what's up with that? And what do I do with that? Are you really real? How do you work in my life? This is what college is about. It's a place to explore these things with God and with other believers. So there's an invitation for you this morning. In Colossians 3.16, Paul is talking to the believers at Colossae, and he is saying, let the word of Christ dwell richly in you. And that's what we wanna practice this morning. So we've set this time aside for you, just so that you can just be. I'm not asking you to produce anything, I just want you to be present. Practice being present. For some of you, it may be a time to just delight and enjoy the Lord. For others of you, it may be I'm just really tired and I just wanna sit here and not really think about anything. That's okay, the Lord knows. So I'm I'm inviting you to be with Jesus. I'm gonna be taking us through John chapter 15. So if you have your Bibles, and for you guys, uh, some of us really like to read the scriptures through. I'm in ESV version. 
And I'm gonna be taking us through John chapter 15 three times this morning. I'm going to give you the opportunity to know that you matter to God and that God is pursuing you. The first time that I read it through, there may be a specific word or image that comes to mind. Okay, let that come up. Take a moment to ponder that with God. The second time that I'm gonna read it through, I'm gonna take longer pauses in between the phrases and the words. So that might be an opportunity to say, Lord, are you wanting me to pay attention to something here? Is there something that you want me to consider? I might throw out some questions as well. The, t- the third time that I read it through, allow the scripture to just pour over you. Allow Jesus to speak directly to you. And I'm gonna guide us through this time so you don't have to worry about it. Let's see what God has in store for us as we allow his truth to dwell richly in us. Because we matter to him and what he does in us matters. He meets with us. And how he meets with us can minister to the deepest parts of our souls. He can help us to know that we are loved and that we are not alone. That he cares for us. And honestly, sometimes we just need to be reminded of that because we forget. So let's just be with God together. Previous to John uh, 15, in chapter 13, uh, this is Jesus' farewell discourse. And he's washing the disciples' feet. In this time, he says that Jesus is gonna betray him. And then he continues on and foretells that Peter is gonna deny, deny him. He knew. He knew where people were at. And then he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And then he promises, as he goes away, that the Holy Spirit is going to come, that he's giving us a helper to teach us, to walk with us. He reminds us that we are not alone. So as we go into John 15, let's take a moment to prepare our hearts to hear from the Lord. Pay attention to what pulls your heart. If there is a word or an image or a thought that stands out. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Jesus says to the disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean, because of the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, 
you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Take some time to prayerfully consider this with God. As Jesus is speaking these words to the disciples, he's giving them an image of what a true relationship with God looks like. Christ is the vine, God is the vine dresser. And the disciples are the branches, the future believers. God wants to bear fruit, the fruit of his spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruits of the Spirit that the Holy Spirit wants to yield and grow in us. Jesus also says that if you abide in him and his words abide in you, you can ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And often this feels like, so I can just ask for anything. But I think that as we pray and as God grows his fruit in us, our prayers start to line up with his prayers and his kingdom purposes. He shapes us and he grows us. So we begin to pray the things of the kingdom. We begin to pray more the things that Jesus desires. And so our prayers line up with his and he carries out his will in that. The second time, I'm gonna read it through, I'm gonna take a few longer pauses in between. Let's see what God has for us. Jesus says to the disciples, he says this to you. I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. So what might God be pruning in you? Every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me. and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me, 
you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, so that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. As I read through this passage, our third time, would you stand with me? And would you have your hands open, unless you're holding your Bibles, you and hold your Bible, uh, in a posture open to receiving from the Lord. Jesus says to you, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. <laughs> As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this that someone laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from the Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you 
that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. We hope you enjoyed this message. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Learn more at biola.edu.